right. You guys are live. Okay, thank you very much. Well, um, this is the planning committee meeting of Akron City Council. Uh, specifically, this is the budget um, review. Uh, primarily, if I understand correctly, this is the uh, capital budget uh, reference uh, public utility portion um, of that, um, which uh, begins, I think, uh, looking here real quickly, I believe on page 20. Um, that is correct. Under water and sewer, uh, $111 million. Um, it's what we're looking at as the first item, but we do have a presentation here. Um, Jenny, are you the one that's going to be uh, speaking to us today? Yes, I am. Okay, very good. The one thing we'll do is we'll we'll do like maybe a page or so, a couple pages, and then we'll, um, I don't have that report, but, um, you know, go through a couple items and I'll ask if there's any questions from anyone. Um, so that's how we'll kind of handle this thing. All right. Okay. Good for you. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. good. Thank right, you. Uh, and as we go through, I will um, reference when I'm switching pages for those following around, along in the budget. So good. Thank you. Yeah, maybe at the end of every page, other than the first one, uh, the first <laughs> one only has one item on it. So yeah, okay. at the end of every page, we'll just ask if there's any questions. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, All right. Does anybody have any questions at this moment? And I really can't. All I can see is five people, and I understand 27 are on this line. So. Um, probably a way to see more, but uh, with, it, with short of any, um, anyone with any questions or comments, we'll go ahead and begin, Jenny. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I am Jenny Hanna. I'm the Akron Environmental Division Manager, uh, and I will be presenting the sewer portion of the proposed budget this afternoon. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> Uh, oh. okay. uh, before we get started with the list of projects, I just wanted to highlight a few awards um, that were received by the Akron Waterways Renew uh, Program last year. Um, the program received the Ohio EPA Encouraging Environmental Excellence Award. They re it received a gold level award in that program. Uh, also, the Ohio Water Environment Association uh, presented its elected officials award to Mayor Dan Horrigan and highlighted his uh, work on the uh, AWR program. Also, um, the American Council of Engineering Companies, uh, also referred to as ASEC, presented their Outstanding Achievement Award to the Aqueduct Complete uh, Green Street Project. Excellent. That's great. Well done, everyone who participated in that. Okay, so the first project we have on our list starting on page 20 is the Chittenden Green Project CSO Rack 3. Um, this project is the construction of green infrastructure at two sites to control combined sewer overflows. Uh, the project is complete and operational. Construction closeout work will be completed this year. Uh, moving to page 21 of the budget. Uh, next project is the CMOM five-year cycle. Uh, this project is the implementation of the Capacity Management Operation and Maintenance Program. This program includes inspection of the sewer sub system every five years required by the consent decree uh, and identification of sewer rehabilitation projects to help prevent CSOs. This year is the third year, or is the second year of the third five-year cycle. The combined sewer overflow real-time control project includes implementation of a real-time control system to monitor and control wet weather storage in the sewer system, storage basins, the tunnel, and at the water reclamation facility to optimize operation. Uh, the CSO program management team project is the program management services necessary for implementation of the Akron Waterways Renewed program. And the Cuyahoga Street Storage Facility Rehabilitation Project is construction of repairs and improvements to the Cuyahoga Street Storage Facility. With that, do you want to pause for any questions? 
Sure, is there any questions from anyone? Again, I can't, uh, Sarah, I, I'm gonna rely on you. I assume you're still on the line because uh, I really can't see. Um, it looks like Con Councilman Malik has his hand raised. Okay, Mr. Malik. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And uh, thank you, Ms. Hanna. Um, I guess I just if you could go into a little bit more detail about um, the CMOM program and sort of what, what it entails. Um, it in, entails um, televising and cleaning every um, sewer pipe uh, in the su sanitary sewer system over a five-year period. Um, so, and then once a five-year period is completed and reported to EPA, another uh, five-year period starts. So basically we are cleaning and televising the entire sewer system um, every five years. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Further questions or comments? We're not hearing any. Uh, Jenny? Okay. The Dwayne, the Dwayne Green Project CSO RAC 3 is construction of green infrastructure at three sites to control uh, combined sewer overflows. The project is complete and operational and construction closeout work will be completed this year. The Hazel Storage Basin CSO RAC 10 and 11 is construction of a 4.5 million gallon storage basin to control combined sewer overflows to zero in the typical year. The basin is complete and operational. Construction closeout work will be completed this year. The Kelly Conveyance CSO RAC 3 project is the upsizing of the RAC 3 over underflow pipe to control CSOs in the typical year. The project is complete and operational uh, and construction closeout work will be completed this year. The Memorial Conveyance CSO RAC 26 and 28 project is the upsizing of the RAC 26 and RAC 28 underflow pipes to control CSOs in the typical year. And the Northside Sewer Separation and Conveyance Design project is um, detailed, wait, is the um, detailed design services necessary for the Northside Sewer Separation and Conveyance program this includes the RAC 34 and 35 sewer separations and the north side interceptor sewer replacements. I'll pause for any questions. I uh, see, Ms. no. Anyone? Okay. Mr. Foss. I'm sorry, go um, ahead. Malik. Thank you. Um, Ms. Hannah, just re regarding north side sewer separation and conveyance, I know that you know there was an amendment before the uh, judge uh, proposed amendment uh, in order to avoid building another interceptor tunnel. Do, do you know what the status of that is? Um, we have been having um, monthly um, calls with the US EPA um, technical and um, legal uh, representatives. Um, so we have been reviewing with them the progress as we go along in the study and gathering data. And um, we will be um, uh, drafting an amendment three um, to be presented to the judge. Um, that hasn't currently been done, it's, but uh, the work is underway. Okay, so we don't know yet finally whether, which direction we'll go in ultimately. Um, we're, we will be presenting um, to do the sewer separation uh, project, okay. um, but we're just completing, you know, some of the field work and design work um, just to nail down the details on that. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good, any further questions? Okay, very good. The Northside Sewer Separation and Conveyance Program Management Project is funding for the program management services necessary for the Northside program. Uh, Fieldwork, survey, inspections, and sewer modeling were completed last year. Some of that work will extend into this year along with preliminary design uh, for the work. Uh, and we're moving to page 22 of the proposed budget. Okay, so that's... I'm sorry, but the, um, so the 8.2 million funding for the program that uh, for management as well as the first phase? Yeah, for the preliminary design work before we enter into detailed design. Okay. Um, 
So what, what's what's the difference between the uh, the four million above that and the eight point two million? Um, the four million above that will actually be detailed design for the individual projects. So it'll be actually developing the plan sheets and and cost estimates uh, for bidding of the projects. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, OSIT Bank Stabilization is a bank stabilization project to protect the slopes of the river upstream and downstream of the tunnel, tunnel overflow structure. The OSIT Odor Control Project is for design and construction of improvements necessary to manage any odors from the uh, OSIT Tunnel Project during dry weather. And the Ohio Canal Interceptor Tunnel is um, the consent decree project to construct the Ohio Canal Interceptor Tunnel. The tunnel is complete and operational and construction closeout work will be completed this year. And then any questions? No, wait, um, any questions? Okay, very good, okay. The Euler Conveyance CSO Rack 27 and 29 project is the upsizing of the Rack 27 and 29 underflow pipes. The project is complete and operational and construction closeout work will be completed this year. The WRF Biosept project is construction of a new biological chemically enhanced primary treatment system at the water rec reclamation facility to provide treatment of influent wet weather flows in excess of 20, 220 MGD. The WRF Headworks project is for construction to upgrade the headworks to provide 280 million gallon capacity. It includes screening and grip facilities and will replace the main outfall sewer crossing over the Cuyahoga River. Okay, open up for any questions at this point and I guess I'll begin um, obviously, that was um, quite a bit of CSO um, within that piece, um, obviously. Where are we in terms of a percentage now? And then where do you forecast, assuming we're able to complete everything, where will, where will we be next year at this time of completion with regards to the consent decree? Um well, we've, complete, we've completed or have under construction all but um, two projects in the program. Um, and I believe uh, we're over 90% uh, complete with the entire program. So um, next year we'll be um, completing, um, you know, some of these closeout of projects that were underway. And um, we'll also, um, be doing some of the memorial construction um, and then you know we won't be necessarily begin construction of the north side projects um, this year maybe next year what's the forecast for the north side projects in terms of duration how long it will take um i i can get back to you with that i don't have the i don't know off the top of my head the duration for the Okay, do we have a forecast in terms of when we believe that we may be completed with the consent decree requirements? Um, we we uh, are required to be completed with them by 2027. Okay. And we're on schedule, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Any further questions or comments from anyone? Mr. Mallet. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, for the uh, Biosept and the Headworks, um, you know, I think both of those are, are really important improvements. What is the timeline? Are, are, this is, I think, construction for both of these, but uh, what's the timeline for completing these two projects? Uh, the Biosept, uh, WRF Biosept project um, is a consent decree project and uh, will be completed by the end of this year. Um, and the Headworks project um, is also um, scheduled uh, to be completed this year. Thank you. Is that the overall price on both of those? Uh, no, it, no, it is not. It's only the cost for this year. So what, what, what is the total cost for both of those? Um, Estimate, get it 
I'm not done. One second. And maybe just a brief description, um, if you don't mind, in terms of like where this is located and what it's just a brief one or two sentence description. Okay. Uh, the the Biosept, the total cost for the Biosept project is about $24.5 um, million. And for the Headworks, um, about $44 million total. Um, the Biosept project is located, you can see the project site. Um, if you drive by on Akron Peninsula Road, it's right across from the um, administration building at the second entrance. Uh, a lot of cranes out there <laughs> constructing um, that new tank right now. Um, and then the Headworks um, project is located at the south end of the plant. So um, at the first entrance that you would encounter on Akron Peninsula Road um, going um, north. And what was the second part of the question? I know you had a second part where it's located. That, like, you know, what, what, what is the, uh, what's the goal? I okay. guess in terms of the completion, my web completed. Okay, so the WRF Biosept project, we've done several upgrades of our secondary treatment, um, our secondary treatment process train over um, the past 10 years. And we've increased the capacity of that secondary treatment um, to 220 MGD. So we have 280 um, maximum MGD that can come into the plant. Um, so the difference between the two of those, the 280, what we can take in the front door versus what can go through secondary treatment and get biological treatment is 60 MGD. So this project would um, treat, provide biological treatment equivalent to the secondary treatment to that remaining 60 million gallons. Um, before it's um, discharged to um, the Cuyahoga River. So it's basically um, providing that level of treatment during wet weather events um, for that last 60 million gallons. And the ultimate goal, of course, is that we would have zero overflows, correct? Right, we would have zero bypasses around that secondary treatment process. So this would be um, filling in that gap that's there. Yeah, and that's, and, and both of these combined would fill that gap, correct? Um, that is just the Biosup project. The Headworks project is actually an upgrade of the preliminary treatment at the wastewater plant. So okay. when the flow comes into the plant, it's screened. Um, but it's big, if you've been down there before, the big screen, screening building, the rotating screen, those are being replaced. Um, and also, um, you know, outside adjacent to that facility, there's grit tanks and those tanks are being replaced, um, just time to replace the equipment. And uh, also, you know, they're taking more flow uh, down at the wastewater plant as part of our CSO improvements. So this upgrades those um, facilities to provide um, treatment, preliminary treatment to that portion of the flow. So it's right at the start of the process at the plant. Very and good. then the replacing of the main outfall sewer over the Cuyahoga River is um, the span of the sewer that goes from the, um, the recycle energy facility on, on that side of the river um, over to the plant side of the river. Um, and uh, benefit of that project, it's going to be a clear span, a uh, new bridge put in, so there won't be um, any piers or obstructions in the Cuyahoga River for that crossing. So. Very good, thank you. And I, I would submit this, and, and I don't know, you know, if it's prudent. I, I'd, I'd like to, if there's interest on council, uh, to maybe take a brief tour and maybe a deeper dive. Probably not appropriate to say that in reference to what we're speaking about, but um, <laughs> maybe a deeper. I know some of us went through in 2019 and 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 got a, a brief tour before this project even started, but. Um, yeah, that would be, if there's interest, I would uh, definitely be one to go and maybe spend an hour, a couple hours or whatever, kind of seeing what we're investing in. And so we can articulate to our constituents what, you know, what a lot of this is all about. It's, it's uh, a, a lot of technical stuff here. So, and it, but, but, but you're doing great work. So <laughs> we're on to sanitary sewers at this point then. Okay. 
the Britain Road pump station number two reconstruction project is re reconstruction of an existing sanitary sewer pump station that was built in 1973. The flow monitoring and rain gauge project uh, is the continuation of the operation and maintenance of the city's rain gauges and flow meters that collect rainfall data and flow. And it's the data is used in the modeling and operation of the sewer system. Um, moving to page 23 at this point. Um, pardon me, I believe Councilman uh, Lombardo has a quick question. Yes, okay. Mr. Lombardo, please. Yes, I just wanted to ask Ms. Hannah, um, where exactly is that Britain Road pump station on Britain Road? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, it's located just south of the Britain Road, Howe Road intersection on the um, east side, I believe. Yeah. So behind Chapel Hill? Yeah, it's actually across, it would be across. Oh, Chapel Hill. I know where it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, the force main replacement project is the reconstructed of deteriorated force mains from the Fairhill, Cromwell, Fairlawn, Knowles, and Clearfield pump stations. The Grand Park sewer improvements is designing construction of sewer improvements to increase sewer capacity on Grand Park Avenue to alleviate bat basement backups during wet weather events. The Hawkins District Sewer Improvements is designing construction of recommended sewer repairs to reduce uh, inflow and infiltration into the sewer uh, and backups during wet weather. Miscellaneous, miscellaneous collection system improvements is, um, includes commercial sewer lateral replacements and also um, vehicle replacement and equipment replacement for um, the water reclamation faci facility and um, sewer maintenance. Uh, any questions? Mr. Mallet. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, Ms. Hannah, could you just talk a little bit more about the force main replacement? Uh, wh what exactly, you know, wh where are these mains going and um, yeah, if you could just, because I know this, you know, as an area, obviously there's a lot of topographical challenges with um, where these houses were built on Farewell and Fairhill and Cromwell, those streets. Yes, these um, forest mains would be, um, they're currently existing. Um, so they basically go from the existing pump stations um, and then to a discharge point in the sanitary sewer. Um, so the replacements would be following the same alignment, just putting in a new pipe um, basically for the discharge of the sewer. Thank you. <laughs> Any uh, further questions? Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, Jenny. The Quake, <clears throat> the Quaker Ridge pump station reconstruction project is construction of a replacement pump station in Force Main. Uh, and then the next eight projects are a series of sanitary sewer reconstruction projects that make repairs uh, to the sewers and manholes um, that are prioritized, identified and prioritized based upon the results of the CMOM cleaning and televising um, that we talked about earlier that we do on the five-year cycle. Um, so we have uh, two projects that are implemented each year, um, one large diameter lining project and one um, small diameter um, lining project. So I'm gonna run through these and just note kind of the status of each of them, but they're all the same type of project um, repair to um, some open re cut repair to sewers um, and manholes, um, but mostly um, lining of the sewers without any excavation. Um, so the first one is the Sanitary Sewer Reconstruction 2018 Large Diameter Lining Project. This project's currently under construction. The Sanitary Sewer Reconstruction 2018 Small Diameter Lining Project. Uh, construction closeout will be completed this year for this project. 
and then sanitary sewer reconstruction 2019 large diameter lining uh, design completion and construction is included this year. Any questions on those? Oh. <laughs> Not seeing anyone. No, I don't see any hands raised. Okay. The sanitary sewer, oh, we're moving to page 25 now tonight. Uh, the sanitary sewer reconstruction 2019 small diameter lining project is under construction. The sanitary sewer reconstruction um, 2021 large diameter lining project and the two and the small diameter uh, lining project uh, design and comp design completion and construction is included this year. And then the next two, the next one the sanitary sewer reconstruction 2020 large diameter lining project um, design is included this year um, for submitting an OPC OPWC application. Um, for the project. Any any questions on those? I don't see, maybe I'm missing something, but I don't see the 2020. Yes, we, we didn't skip a funding year. We moved our years. We skipped in the naming of the project. We skipped 2020 in order to get the projects more aligned with the year that they're being constructed. <laughs> so okay. um, we have this year, um, in, two, in 2020, we submitted 2021, um, and then knowing that the construction would not occur till 2021 because of the OPWC funding. Okay, so so, so, so the the 2021 large diameter at three million two twenty five. That's really 2020. Is that right? Correct. We okay. we designed we did started the design of that project in um, 2020. Gotcha. So, so basically the next four there, you just move them up a year, right? So if right. I understand that correctly, am I correct? Right. Okay, good. Just want to make sure we're on the same, same page. Okay. Good. Uh, the sanitary sewer reconstruction 2022 small diameter lining project uh, design is included this year for an OPWC application for the project. The Sevilla Trunk Sewer Reconstruction Project is completion of construction of the Sevilla Trunk Sewer Replacement. And then the, sh the Shoreline Pump Station Improvements Project uh, is improvements to the existing pump station to support new residential housing uh, to accommodate greater volume. And then we're moving to page 25 with this project. Um, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll ask if there's any questions, but I, I have one. The Shoreline Pump Station Improvements, mm -hmm. where's that located at? Uh, it's located off Carnegie Avenue uh, along Nesmith Lake. Okay, gotcha. Uh, the Zurich Road Pump Station Replacement Project is completion of construction of the um, Zurich Road Pump Station Replacement. The Springfield Lake trunk sewer lining is reconstruction of approximately 3,500 feet of 33 inch diameter sanitary sewer um, using CIPP lining. And then any questions on those? Um, what's, have you ever me measured or the engineering bureau, like what the difference between like a lining project versus like a, like you, what, what did you call that? A, a, dig and cut or whatever, um, you know, what that difference is, how much the saving or whatever is, or just if there is? Um, I, I don't know of any specific cases, but I'm, I'm sure we've evaluated the two against each other. A lot of times there's like non-financial factors that weigh into doing the lining project, um, not disturbing a certain sensitive area or, um, you know, traffic disruption and other things, depth of sewer, um, okay. which would weigh into it. Okay. Yeah, I'm just curious if there's a cost savings. I assume there would be, but I probably safety, I would assume too, but I don't know. Right. I think we've, we've, we've evaluated case by case situations, um, but a lot of those other factors um, weigh in on it. 
Okay, good. Thanks, Mr. Malik. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Hanna, um, can, what is the timeline for the Surrey Road pump station replacement? Um, it's currently under construction. I'm not sure of the um, completion. I believe it's planned to be completed this year. I can get back to you with schedule, more updated schedule information. If you'd like. That'd be great. Thank you. Good. Well, I think we're under the Short of any que further questions, Talmadge Master Meter Facility. Um, one, there's one before that. That's the um, sustainability initiatives. Um, this project is for the installation of sewer backwater valves to prevent um, backups. Uh, and also um, the project includes a rain barrel program for stormwater management. The Talmadge Master Meter Facility reconstruction is reconstruction of the existing master meter to move it above ground to allow for safer access by maintenance personnel. And the Tampa Avenue lateral lining is uh, the lining of sanitary sewer laterals on Tampa Avenue. Um, there's some root, roots from the laterals entering the main line uh, and causing uh, issues there. Very good. Any questions on those? Okay, Mr. Malik. Uh, Ms. Hanna, for the uh, sustainability initiatives, um, can you kind of speak to the rain barrel program? Uh, well, you, may, uh, you know, has, has that been successful over the past few years? Have we been, you know, given these away faster than we can buy them uh, in terms of the barrels? Um, I don't know if we've given all of them away every year, but um, there's been considerable interest in the program. Um, we do always have through to, the one that's administered through AWR program. Um, and we typically do have a waiting list of people um, interested, um, you know, going into each year. Thank you. Okay. We're moving on to the stormwater systems category. Uh, first project is the Brewster Creek NIPSIS. Um, this is for um, preparation of a non-point source implementation strategy plan, which is where the NIPSIS uh, abbreviation comes from. Uh, this plan is to address increased erosion and allow the city to apply for grant funds a lot of um, funding programs for um, stream restoration projects require the development of one of these plans. Okay. Uh, the flood prone property acquisition project is a FEMA grant to purchase uh, identified prop properties in South Akron that have experienced repetitive flooding. And the municipal miscellaneous storm sewer improvements is designing construction uh, or reconstruction of various stormwater improvements throughout the city. Uh, there's no specific locations identified at this time. Okay, very good. Seeing no questions, we can go ahead on to the next page. Okay. Water reclamation. Yep. Under the water reclamation facility category, we have first the annual plant renewal project. Um, this renewal project includes miscellaneous improvements at the WRF, including equipment, overhauls, replacement, building improvements, process and electrical improvements, energy efficient, efficiency, uh, and roof replacements. Uh, also included is electrical upgrades at the renewable energy facility. The WRF bank stabilization project is construction of bank stabilization to protect the river slopes near the plant outfall. And the WRF process system replacement project is a replacement of the WRF process control system that um, operates and monitors the um, wastewater, uh, the WRF. Any questions? Okay, very good. Water distribution. Mr. Fosco, can I? Oh, yeah, sure, Mr. Malik. Thank you. Just going back to page 25, the miscellaneous storm sewer improvements, 
Is and you mentioned there are no locations currently. Is that because those are typically things that come up as emergencies, or or what is that for? And then also, uh, it seems like the one of the rare things in this section funded by general operating. Is there a reason why it's that as opposed to sewer capital or or another designation? Um, you're correct that um, those are typically things that come up throughout the year that need addressed um, under that. So emergency projects. Um, it is not funded by sewer capital because the storm sewer um, maintenance and repair of the storm sewers um, is not um, funded under sewer capital. Thank you. Water distribution, right? That is correct. And Mr. Bernowski is going to do that presentation. I know he was on a minute ago. Yeah, he's on. There we go. All right. Hello. Um, all right. Uh, we're going to get this all set up right here. All right. I'm going to share my screen. Is that shared yet or no? No? Not, not yet. Okay, one second. Okay. All right, we're gonna get started. Um, Good afternoon. I am Jeff Bernowski. I will be presenting on behalf of the Water Supply Bureau. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here this afternoon and appreciate the fact that I represent 125 amazing employees in the Water Supply Bureau who have done some amazing things um, just in the last year and have a lot of plans to do some great things in 2021. And this budget is, is one big piece of all the good things we have going on in water. So thank you very much. Um, in 2021, you'll see a total here of over 82 million um, that we have listed in the capital budget. That's somewhat skewed by a single project. And, um, and that's the meters project that we'll talk about where um, water is not going to be funding that entire project. So uh, it makes as if it looks like water spending 82 million, but that's not the case. Um, so I will start with the water distribution division. Um, and I will start with the Archwood pumping station improvements here. Um, this is a almost a $1.2 million uh, water supply revolving loan fund project. Um, this is to replace a pump station that's approximately 65 years old that currently only has one operating pump. And in our world, uh, redundancy is most important. When an item fails, we have to be absolutely certain that we have a second pump ready to go. Um, this this uh, station services the South High Service, High Service District, which is primarily um, in the Firestone uh, Park area. Um, it's, uh, it parallels another pump station. So fortunately we do have another pump station that can pick up um, if this were to fail, uh, but it's best that uh, we have this in service. Uh, they're pumping, these pump water out of normal service. So lower pressured areas into higher pressure areas and fills the tanks at Firestone, our Firestone tank and our Crozier tank. And feel free to, uh, I'll do a couple like Jenny did, two or three. I don't have nearly the, the uh, number of uh, 
capital requests that uh, and our uh, sewer has. So I'll do two or three of these and then uh, stop for questions. Um, this is the uh, meter replacement project, okay? And um, not only is it replacing meters, but it's also improving our customer information system. Um, and so that is the, the system that holds all of our customers' information. Um, it's a system that's in need of uh, significant upgrades. And as part of this project, uh, we're going to upgrade that customer information system. And by doing so, the customer service that we're going to be able to provide that we cannot provide now will be immense. It's going to go well beyond our capabilities as they exist, exist now. Uh, we're also going to a fixed uh, meter network where we're no longer driving by and collecting meter reads every 30 days. We're going to be able to continuously communicate uh, with these meters, which brings a whole lot of opportunity to identify leaks, identify burst pipes, identify theft, identify backflow, um, gives the opportunity for customers to know where they stand with regards to their usage within a middle of a month. When we're only driving by every 30 days, we have no idea if, you know, if they may be abo above a budget number that they're trying to keep. So with this project, we're gonna be able to offer that. Um, it has a tremendous number of features that um, ultimately will significantly improve the customer service, which is of the utmost importance to us here in water. And we also serve sewer and the sewer billing. And we also um, are responsible for the refuse building as well. So it's a very exciting project. Uh, this project is, um, is going to be at least 50% funded uh, with sewer as well, because of the fact that, uh, you know, we are the, 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 the meter also represents the sewer billing infrastructure as well. So uh, okay. are there any questions on those first two items? Yeah, Jeff, I, not necessarily a question, but I think it's important to note for all of council that um, the difference between, at least the book that I'm looking at, or at least the information I'm looking at was prepared um, for the planning commission on December 18th. I don't know if there's a newer one out there or not budget wise, but mine uh, has a 59 million, is that what it says 59? Yeah, 59 million, $574,424 and 46 cents. Uh, this is updated um, and many of these are, um, it changes because these, the, the, these budgets are prepared in the late fall, early winter time mm -hmm. or have you uh, October, November, and they change. And what we'll see is, is whenever we go to pass the uh, capital budget, we'll see some changes that would be reflected whenever the, some of these estimates are updated. Um, I see Miss Helen, you're, uh, you're ready to comment on that. If I missed something, uh, yeah. please. That, that is absolutely correct. We're in the process of preparing an amendment and you shall have that by, um, by Monday morning with changes of what was presented to you um, December 30th and versus what is presented to you. As we get uh, better numbers, we are updating those. So you'll get an amendment Monday morning. Okay, thank you, Helen, thank you. Very good, okay, Jeff Bernowski, you're back on. Okay. I mean, no other right. questions. Okay, so if, okay. if not, we'll... We'll continue. Mr. Malik does have a question. Yes. Okay, yep. Hey. Hi, Mr. Bernowski. Thank you for being here. Um, I think this uh, water meter uh, program is gonna be wonderful, especially as you point out with regard to customer service. Um, I know that's something that you guys really prize and that there's so many new things that we're gonna be able to do. Um, what's the timeline for the, for the project right now? Uh, the, uh, the project has kicked off. And we are in kind of the professional services part of the project where we are putting together all of the processes and procedures in order to uh, initiate the meter change out. Um, and we expect the meter change out, the first meters to, to be kicked off about six months from now is, is where we're looking. So the July, August timeframe is, is where we're seeing our first meters. And then um, 
we are looking at an 18 month to 24 month replacement schedule. So it's, it's expected to be about two and a half years um, when we have completed the last meter. And then throughout this process is, is when we're going to be converting from the current CIS system to um, the new CIS system. So uh, three, three years from now is the expectation that um, we should be completed with this entire project. We're remote, um, doing a replacement of 85,000 meters. And it's not only in the city of Akron, but it's also other communities which we, we bill and maintain. So Fairlawn and Mogador and all the neighboring townships that we have jet agreements with as well are included in there. So. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, very good. Force main steel transmission study. Yeah, so so this is uh, nearly a five hundred thousand dollar project, and um, this is to study and evaluate the current condition of very critical force mains. These are critical. These are force mains that are in the city of Kent that transfer water from the Akron water plant that's in, in uh, just north of Kent and Portage County into the city of Akron. These are original force mains, okay, that, that went in in the 1915 to 1920 timeframe. So um, we, we've, uh, we've done a number of other sections over the year and we've replaced them, um, but these are ones that we need to uh, evaluate to, to look at you know, what is the remaining service life? And is there an opportunity to, to continue to utilize these as they are now? Or should we start considering budget to do a replacement on these? So it's, it's about three and a half miles of pipe that we're, uh, we're most concerned about. So uh, this project here is um, over at uh, Home Avenue over the Little Cuyahoga River uh, the county just replaced that bridge. And when they replaced that bridge, there was a section of water line that was previously exposed in, in the river. That, um, that portion of water line, and it was exposed because over the years, the scouring of the water uh, eliminated the protective cover of that main. So we, we decided to take that section of main out of service and uh, ultimately now have a, you know, two, a section of main that's missing. So two dead on lines on either side. The intent with this project is to build a utility bridge over the Little Cuyahoga River to, um, to support the, the water main and uh, two large uh, communication fiber optic cables would also be included with that. Um, you know, once again, redundancy and um, the ability to flow flows in every direction is very important. Um, having single dead end lines where if, uh, you know, on the early part of the line, if it breaks, you take a whole bunch of customers out of service. Um, we don't want that. We want to be able to feed in multiple directions throughout the distribution system. And so this is a, uh, an improvement that, that needs to be made. Um, also, a similar situation where um, we, for, for some reason, many years ago, a water line was built under the old uh, Galat meat packing building, and there's a leak in that line. Um, we've had to take that line out of service. And once again, in this situation, have two dead end lines that uh, need to be connected. Um, this budget is assuming the building is going to stay, um, and we'll have to do some very unique directional drilling to bypass around this, this uh, meat packing building. Um, but our hope is, is that this will be demolished in the very near future and we won't have to go to the extravagant means of directional drilling to, to make this improvement. So this one, we're going to see how the year goes and um, do our best to avoid having to spend a half a million dollars on this single line. And then um, lastly, uh, until I offer up for questions, is something that, you know, is, is so near and dear to my heart simply because it's, it's such an important initiative for the city of Akron and for our nation. Um, you know, the replacement of lead service lines has been something that has been, um, you know, the Flint, Michigan situation 
has really um, brought the attention to the importance of communities focusing on removing lead services. And I will be 100% honest with you, I believe Akron has to be one of the best when it comes to the commitment to remove lead services. And it's not just you know the, the last few years of commitment that we've had. There have been generations of leadership um, leadership at city council, leadership in the administration, and leadership, most importantly, in the Utilities Bureau, started um, by Wendell Ledoux and Dave Crandall, where we had 55,000 lead services across the city of Akron. We are now down to three, 3,000. I mean, it's, it's, it's an unbelievable account, accomplishment. Um, we've been doing everything we can to um, find alternate resources financially to support this. And in 2021, I'm very proud to say that we're, we're committing $2 million um, to the lead service line replacement, and none of that money needs to be paid back. We got a million dollars from OPWC, and we got a million dollar principal forgiveness loan um, to pay for the removal of these lead services. And to, to go even further, our crews we're not hiring outside contractors who might be marking up the replacement of these services. Our crews are gonna be out there doing this work and that we are going to build that up against a loan that's gonna be 100% principally forgiven as part of an EPA program. Um, this is gonna remove approximately 310 lead services this year. To give you an example, um, in 2020, we did 150 services where we also got a principal forgiveness loan of a million dollars in that case. And then the previous year, um, we removed 80 lead services. So over 500 lead services in three years with the majority of that money be, uh, being obtained from outside sources. So it's, it's a really a wonderful thing. Um, we do have a website where the folks in GIS have, have put a website on akronohio.gov slash water so that people can go in, look at their address and see if they still are served by a lead service or not. The staff at GIS is updating that as we complete them on our end. So it's, it's really, a, really a great program that, you know, before I leave here, I would love to be able to walk out and say, we got rid of every one of them. So that's where we stand right now. Um, I'll open it up for questions. Yeah, Jeff, that's, uh, no, that's, you're so right. We have talked some about, it. I think, I believe we have legislation before council tonight on this, but regardless, I mean, you know, as much as we grind about the, the CSO and, you know, the, what, what it occurred generations ago there, you know, uh, this one here, they definitely got this, this one right. And so um, it is, it's in, in every, every generation has learned from the, the last in terms of this, and uh, keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. You. Any questions? Okay. Okay, very good. Right. We can move on. All right. Um, this is, uh, this is a, a project that's actually in Hudson. That's another community I didn't mention earlier when we, I was talking about the uh, water meter replacement. But we do serve almost 2,000 um, customers in the city of Hudson. And in the city of Hudson, we actually have and tack on a $17, almost $18 a month fee to every account in Hudson to generate a, a capital investment uh, program simply for Hudson. Um, and this was done, I believe, dating back to 2015. And we generate about a half a million or so dollars a year that is committed to Hudson improvements. Um, there is another, you'll see a couple projects here um, and so from that fund um, is where we, we are going to replace a number of water lines in neighborhoods over in Hudson. Um, in Hudson, our, our crews have full responsibility to operate, maintain, and respond to water main breaks. So there's a cost for us doing that on the operating side. So we try to use these capital dollars picked up by this, this uh, Hudson uh, surcharge that we add to um, eliminate our cost of maintenance in the uh, city of Hudson. So that's a, about a $1.5 million project for chronically breaking uh, water mains. Um, we are also doing this project here, 
which is a booster station that uh, serves all of Hudson as well. And this one as well would be through that fund. And uh, it also serves one of our largest customers, which is the Coca-Cola bottling plant, which is on Highland Road, um, which straddles Twinsburg Township in Twinsburg. Um, they've, they've, they've been a really good customer for us. They bring in a lot of revenue into Akron Water. And so we're, we're doing our best to improve um, this pump station that was put in in about 1995 as a temporary pump station for only you know, a, a few years um, of operation. Um, and it's turned out to be a pretty reliable station, but it's at the point now where it's 25 years old and, and we need to make improvements to that to improve the efficiency of it, um, the capacity of it, and adding variable frequency drives at this pump station. Um, and then uh, finally, until I open it up for questions, uh, we do have $300,000 that will be coming out of uh, water capital funds. And uh, the, the folks at distribution intend to buy a tandem axle dump and an excavator for this to, um, to deal with water, water main breaks, which is the primary um, task in which the uh, folks there at distribution do. And we have a lot of aging vehicles and such. So I'll, uh, I'll stop there, open it up for questions. Any questions? Okay, perfect. Um, so this is this is one that was presented at, at committee today by uh, Chris Luttle. Um, this is our 2019 water main uh, replacement program. Um, this is one where once again staff worked really hard to go out and find alternate funding sources. The, the amount of um, funding available in water to make capital investments is, is not where we need it to be right now. And so we have to pursue alternate sources. We have to look at other opportunities that may be out there to allow us to reinvest money into capital because capital is where what you, we need to spend on operating. Okay, we need, we need to cover all the costs of operating and then anything in additional to that is where then we invest in capital. So finding alternate sources is really important to us. So this one here found uh, $865,000 uh, to handle the mains that you see here. As, as Chris mentioned, there's many of these mains that are in 100 year old. I mean, you, and you're gonna start hearing that it's a pretty common theme. We are dealing with infrastructure regularly that is 100 years old, 80 years old, 60 years old. Um, and and so, you know, projects like this are where we've prioritized, you know, where, where is it best to spend the money and on which streets based on break history, based on criticality, based on who they serve, based on what, you know, if they're under, you know, certain streets that we can't afford to, to, to have a failure. Um, and so that's how a lot of these lists are formed. But to give you an idea, all right, um, we generally do about 300 main breaks a year. Uh, 245 and 17, 322 and 18, 313 and 19, and then 265 and 20. Um, in a lot of cases, it's 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 weather dependent, it's temperature dependent. When you if we when you have these these large freeze thaw cycles, like it, it's cold, it's pretty cold for you know a week or two, and then it warms up dramatically, and it, it causes the ground to move and the ground to shift. And when that happens even the slightest of movement on one of these joints results in a water main break at the surface where our staff um, responds and makes that correction as soon as possible. And they're generally doing it 300 times a year with you know, a, a good majority of them occurring in the months of December, January, and February. So the, this time a year is a very, very difficult time um, for staff. Um, but it's, it's where they're able to show just uh, how important and valuable they are and for us to recognize them for that, that responsibility. Um, we also, um, there is no 2020 program. This is the 2021 program. Once again, staff went out and uh, was, was able to secure about $1.1 .1 million in OPWC money. So, you know, quote unquote, free money 
um, that we're able to reinvest. And in this case, we need to match it with our side of it, which we're doing through the WSRLA loan. And these are the projects here that will be doing um, part of it. The average age of these mains that you see on the screen here is 80 years old, with the oldest being about 100. Um, so that's uh, another water main replacement project. And then uh, this one here, which uh, we, we attained council legislation for construction just recently on, um, is the West High Pumping Station. The construction of this is, uh, we're advertising next week, we're bidding shortly thereafter. Um, we expect construction to start on July 5th, um, but it's a pumping station that was built in 1914. 1914, and it's a, it's a critical pumping station. Um, it serves our West High District. Um, it's over by Hel Helen Arnold School, if you're not familiar, and it's going to update valves and do a number of electrical imp uh, improvements, the roof, the facade, the building, the structure, the foundation. Um, and so this is a much needed upgrade. And once again, with this project, uh, we were able to obtain $500,000 in outside funding to support this, and then we would match that $500,000. And then uh, lastly, um, this is the West Side Transmission Main Lining Project. Um, some of you may recall that in about 2013, we had one of the largest water main breaks in, in, in my my tenure with the city of Akron, it was it was unimaginable the amount of water that came out of North Street um, and went down a number of other streets in that neighborhood there. But um, this is uh, that that the the type of pipe is this uh, this PCCP pipe, which is a pipe that when it was put in in the 1970s, the industry is finding out that you know there were problems with the steel that they used. Um, it's a reinforcing wire steel that, that wraps the pipe. And in a lot of cases, most especially in Washington, DC, they're, they're having failures on this and we had a failure. And so we're looking at um, actually putting a pipe within a pipe. This is a 36 inch pipe. And we're looking at putting a 30 inch pipe inside of this one um, in an effort to take uh, the, the risk associated with the current original pipe out of play. Uh, it'll be a real unique project. It'll be a real unique project, but we found that we don't need the 36 inch in capacity so we can go with uh, 30 inch. So that, that project is ongoing now. It's, it's under design as we speak. So uh, pretty exciting project. And I look forward to having that se section of main improved as soon as possible. All right, I'll stop with that. That that's the end of the water distribution presentation. And uh, next, I'll talk about water plant. Um, any questions? Any questions? Yeah. Okay. okay. Fantastic. All right. Um, so we're going to go to the water plant, um, and this is this is uh, caustic soda, which is sodium hyd. Um, oh gosh. Uh, we'll just this the um, caustic soda day tank and metering pump replacement. Um, this is a primary tool that is used for pH adjustment in water treatment. And pH adjustment is one of the most critical uh, things we do associated with in, in ensuring that the water in which we treat is not distributed in a corrosive manner. So this is the whole lead. Um, lead conversation. All right, this is a very important project in order to uh, ensure that this this system um, is is beginning to age. Um, failure in a system like this is not an option, so you all you have to be out in front of it. So our intention here is to um, is to replace the day tanks, replace the the bulk storage tanks, the metering pumps, and then the pumps that transfer it from storage today. So uh, $414,000 project through the water supply revolving loan fund. This next one is, um, is to improve our, our acid room. Um, we, we have two acids that we have on site, uh, hydrofluorosilic acid, which is fluoride and hydrochloric acid. Um, th this is the fluoride, which we're required by rule to put in 
um, to the treatment process for tooth decay. And there's required law that we meet a minimum level in the water that we um, produce. And then it's also the hydrochloric acid is used to um, generate um, to generate an oxidant that we have chlorine dioxide on site um, that helps in organics removal and helps in the improved quality of the water. Um, so once again, we're going to replace day tanks, transfer pumps, metering pumps, and a number of outdated parts and materials in this facility. Um, we also have a host of just um, miscellaneous plant improvements associated with a lot of the processes that we have. We have uh, you know, an entire sedimentation process, an entire filtration process, an entire pumping process. Um, and so we, we like to advertise for bid on an annual basis. You know, a lot of small things around the entire plant um, that don't justify in, you know, a single contract, but in, in their entirety, um, it's, it's very uh, uh, cost effective to group into a miscellaneous plant improvement advertised for bid type project. So that's our intention with that. And then finally, um, you know, most importantly is protecting our, our, our plant employees and the safety of our plant employees. And so, you know, electrical upgrades um, where necessary for safety purposes, confined space entries, a lot of PPE, um, personal protective equipment that are used, um, a lot of infrastructure related uh, items with the plant that we use, you know, similar to the other one, a lot of small ones we put together in a single project and, and advertise for bid. So that's the miscellaneous safety improvements. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there. I want to get too far ahead. There's not too many more slides left. So, Questions? okay. All right. Um, so, so this is, you know, this is kind of a, a long-term planning initiative for, for Akron water. Um, we have a, a water plant that went into operation in 1915, okay, 105 years old. Um, we have a reservoir that was built in 1913. We have other reservoirs that, you know, range from 1930s to 1950s in age. And so, you know, we're at the point now where we need to look to the future. We need to determine, you know, what is the best way to treat water or provide water to, to the residents of Akron, um, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now, because that's really, that really, paints us an idea as to where we want to invest now, knowing that we have these goals for the future. So, you know, we, this, this here is to consider any and all options that may be available um, because, you know, we, we expect significant investment being needed in the not too distant future to keep up with the age of, of all the infrastructure that I've spoken about. So we feel that, you know, putting this, this significant planning initiative together to start you know, painting a picture of what the future looks like um, is, is really important at this point. We're looking at, you know, where regulations are going, where customer expectations are going, um, you know, all of, you know, all of the, uh, you know, the, the, the financial constraints that, that exist for our residents as such are all being taken into consideration as, as we uh, pursue a project such as this. Um, one of, one of the uh, more recent projects that we're real excited about is, is looking at um, a unique way to provide uh, electrical uh, energy to the Akron water plant. And um, we, we have been introduced to a couple projects that have existed in the world, um, one of them in the United States, where they're utilizing the reservoir as a, a location um, to place these uh, these solar arrays um, that you know not only provide the opportunity to uh, provide energy to to our facility, but can create a, a cover or a blanket over the reservoir to minimize the amount of sunlight that infiltrates into the water that generally um, will result in organic or activity. And organics are are what are most difficult to treat. One of the most recent organics that has caused a lot of issues are the harmful algal blooms 
that, um, you know, exist on Lake Erie. And, you know, we, we do a fabulous job of managing for those harmful algal blooms as well. Um, you know, and it's, and, and not all algae is harmful, but um, if you minimize the amount of algae is, which is what we do, then the risk for harmful algal blooms go down significantly. And so, you know, we, we see this as a possible project. I mean, this could be real. We're also going to evaluate if, you know, roof mounted, ground mounted um, type canopies can be created to uh, around the plant. We have a lot of land uh, and a lot of area where this, this could be a realistic consideration. So we're going to look at the feasibility of this and um, see if it's, if, it's, uh, if it's possible and, and worth um, the investment in order to, to you know, uh, minimize the costs and uh, provide added water quality benefit as I just described. So that's gonna be initiated within the next several weeks. Um, and then this one here is a uh, low lift operating plan. And this is one where, you know, if in the times of drought or low reservoir elevations, um, we, we need to put together a plan to ensure that we can continue to supply water into the water plant. Um, so this, this would likely involve, you know, like a raw water type pumping station or a temporary emergency pumping station to ensure that we can continue to draw water even when Lake Rockwell Reservoir is low. So uh, any questions? Okay. Um, and then uh, this one here is a vehicle replacement uh, initiative similar to uh, what we had over in water distribution. And we're just trying to update the fleet. Uh, now this would be out at the water plant. So once again, a tandem axle dump and probably a pickup is what we intend to use. Excuse me, we intend to use with, with this funding. And then uh, finally, um, I'll describe uh, the projects we're looking at up in the watershed. Um, and this one here is uh, the Eckert Ditch uh, trailer park demolition. We were, we were able to, uh, with, with the help of nearly a million dollars from a grant from Ohio EPA, um, purchase a trailer park that had a serious um, sewage treatment plant disposal problem. And so we were able to purchase it. And um, as part of receiving this money to purchase it, we you know, were expected to take it out of service, which is exactly what we wanted to happen. And, and now as part of our contribution to this project, there was an expectation that we commit um, this $115,000 to demolish the remaining trailers, to demolish um, a house that's on the site and a uh, barn, and then all the old uh, sewage uh, collection system that was there and any other uh, small items and bring this property back to its natural state. Um, we also are ex excited about this watershed master plan update. Um, back in 2013, um, we prepared our first master plan, um, which did an extensive amount of work in inventorying the watershed. And it's, we're at the point now where it's time to update that. A lot of that information is seven years old. And it's, you know, this is predominantly a GIS exercise that's going to look at all these different attributes and as, um, aspects of the watershed. Like where are there sewers and where are there septic tanks? Where are there wastewater plants? Where is um, large amounts of chemical being stored? Where are there risky um, industrial processes that exist up there that if they in some way failed how could they compromise the watershed? Um, you know, we're looking at population density, we're looking at land use, we're looking at um, land cover, um, point sources and non-point sources. We do time of travel models. So if something happened at this location, 25 miles upstream of the water plant, how long would it take for, our, for, for it to reach the intakes and um, where, it's of most important that we be able to divert or bypass any type problem that would happen. So we do a lot of work with that. Um, so 
we're, we're real excited. Uh, floodplain mapping, I'm just going through here, soils layers, um, parcel sizes, um, so you know, woodland density layer map. So um, that project is, is going to uh, kick off here shortly, and we're going to have a lot of great information with regards to the watershed. Um, and then this, and I believe this, yeah, this is my final slide. Um, watershed property acquisition. We, we like to have um, money available uh, to purchase properties in the watershed that we feel are critical to our goals within the watershed division. Um, and so by having this money budgeted, if a property comes up for sale, we can um, put in competitive bids or we can put in matching and have matching funds available if we're able to secure some type of grant money and such. And so this final one is to, to leave us with that opportunity. So with that said, um, that's uh, the completion of my presentation. And um, if there's any final questions, I'd be- Thank you, Mr. Vernowski, for your presentation. We certainly appreciate it. We'll take it from here. Thank um, you. I believe that uh, Councilman Lombardo has a question. He has a I team saw right? that. Yeah. Just bringing that to my attention. And Councilman Malik, too. But, uh, we also just... have a question as well. So thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Lombardo, uh, you have a question. Yes, I just wanted to know where is Eckert Ditch Trailer Park? Uh, Eckert Ditch Trailer Park is probably one mile from the Akron water plant. It's a, a ditch that uh, comes into Lake Rockwell right about its midpoint. And so anything that goes on um, along properties along that ditch um, are that much closer to the intake than anything upstream. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's the influence that Eckert ditch has on the, the, in, our intake structure is greater than any other tributary that exists out there. So we prioritize projects on that, um, at that, on that ditch, um, to try to keep from there being problems um, that would directly influence this. And this was our biggest problem, this, this bad uh, wastewater treatment plant that, um, you know, is, is something we, we, were, we were really striving to eliminate, and we did, and are really proud to have that going. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Phil. Uh, Mr. Malik has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Gronowski, uh, this uh, update to the Watershed Master Plan sounds great. Do you know if the 2013 Master Plan is available? Yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you. If you could please make that available for off council. We appreciate Thanks, that, yeah. Mr. Gronowski. Thank you. Is there any further questions or comments for reference uh, utilities? Any further questions or comments from anyone? Very good. We want to thank uh, uh, Ms. Hannah and uh, Mr. Bernowski for their uh, presentations this afternoon. We certainly appreciate that. And I see uh, Ms. Tomek is on the line here with us as well. Um, if you could give us a brief update, uh, I know we'll probably have a wrap up next week. Is that correct? So yes, we will provide you with um, amendments to the legislation um, items that were discussed today and last week. By Wednesday, end of the day, we will respond. We will provide a written response to questions that were presented last week and this week. Yeah. And then we need to request passage by February, February 8th, which is next week, because by charter, we need to have this item passed by February 15th. However, we will be on holiday due to President's Day. So passage would be needed by February 8th. Okay, so next Monday, you would like to see this pass. Thank you for correct. Yeah, so um, yeah, so Wednesday, you're you're committing that we will have that available to us, the, the amended, plus all the questions that were asked that weren't. So were the questions, you'll have the questions by Wednesday, and then the amendment uh, by Monday. Okay, well, can we get it Friday? Uh, if we can, we would appreciate it. We'll try. That. We'll try. We yes. That. Because you're asking for passage on Monday, a week from today, if I understand. Correct. That. That's right. correct. Yes. Okay. And we are available if anybody has any questions, we're certainly available 
to answer those between now and Monday please and the you. 8th. Everyone could please loop me into that as well. Um, but we will be, uh, it's important that everyone note that uh, we're gonna be asking for passage next week so that we can stay within the confines of the charter. Um, so, um, but we have had um, a review of every line item here. Mm -hmm. I'd like to remind everyone, we will see this legislation, assuming, assuming there's no changes, we will still see everything that's within the capital budget yet again uh, through the legislative uh, individually. We'll see these uh, items uh, again. So um, if there's any questions or comments from anyone at this time, and if anyone has any questions or comments for me in between now and, and next Monday, please feel free to call more than happy to discuss. And with that, I do believe we're adjourned, everyone. Thank you for all your patience and time. Helen, thanks for putting this together. Thank you, not a problem, not a problem. It's quite a bit of work and thank your staff for us, please. We'll do, we'll do, thank you. Know, it's a lot of effort, it takes a lot of effort. We appreciate all of it. Thank, thank you. you. I'll see so you everyone. have a great evening. <laughs>